It's the middle of the night, and the sky is glowing like mad radioactive red. And if you squint, you can maybe see the moon through a thick cover of airplane exhaust and cigarette smoke that covers the whole city, like a mosquito net that won't let the angels in. And if you look up high enough, you can see me. And I'm standing on the edge of an 87-story building. And up there, a place for gargoyles and broken clock towers that have maybe stayed still and dead for like 100 years. Up there is me. And I'm freaking Batman. And I got <laughs> bat caves and batmobiles and like batarangs like for real. And all it takes is a back room or a fire escape or a broom closet and Danny's hand-me-down jeans are gone. <laughs> <laughs> and my navy blue polo shirt, that one that kind of looks good on me but has a hole on it near the butt where I got snagged on an Archero's fence, that navy blue polo shirt, that's gone too when I get like transformational. <laughs> and nobody pulls out a belt and looks Batman for talking back. Or for not talking back. And nobody calls Batman simple, or stupid, or skinny. And nobody fires Batman's brother from the Eastern Taxi Company because they was making cutbacks neither. Because they got nothing but respect. And not like afraid of respect, like respect respect. Because nobody's afraid of you. Because Batman don't mean nobody no harm, ever. Because all Batman really wants to do is save people. And maybe pay up Wayla's bills one day. And die happy. And maybe get like mad famous. <laughs> <laughs> and kill the Joker. Tonight, like most nights, I'm all alone. And I'm watching. And I'm waiting. Like an eagle. Or like a no, no, yeah, like an eagle. And from where I am, I can see everything. I got bulletproof stuff all in my chest so nobody can hurt me. And nobody, nobody is going to come between Batman and justice. Somewhere in the city, there's an old lady, and she's picking up styrofoam leftovers out of a trash can. And she's putting a piece of sesame chicken, somebody spit it out, into her own mouth. And somewhere, there's a man, a man in a janitor's uniform, and he's stumbling home, drunk and dizzy, after spending half his paycheck on 40-ounce bottles of twist-off beer, and the other half on a four-hour visit to some lady's house on a street where all the lights have been shot out by people who, who'd rather do what they do in this city in the dark. And half a block away from janitor man, there's a group of good for nothings who don't know no better and they're holding rusted bicycle chains and imitation Louisville sluggers. And if they don't find a cent on Janitor Man, which they won't, they'll just pound at it till the arms, the muscles in their arms start aching and burning, till there's no more teeth left to crack out. But they don't count on me. They don't count on no dark night, because they'd rather believe I don't exist. And from 87 stories up, I hear one of the good for nothing say, give me the cash, real fast, just like that. Give me the fucking cash. <laughs> and I see Janet and man mumble something in drunk language. And I'd see him turn pale. And from 87 stories up, I can hear his stomach trying to hurl its way out of his dickies. So I swoop down like mad fast. I'm like darkest night. Swoosh! <laughs> and then I throw a battering at the one naked light bulb. And I'm like, whoa, who just turned out the lights? <laughs> <laughs> what was that? What? Give me what you got, old man. Do you hear that? Hear what? There ain't nothing. No, really. There ain't no bad. But then, one of the good productions gets it to the head. Bam! And number two comes and swings blindly into the dark cave before him. But before he can do anything, I grab a trash can. They don't like Bam! Right in the head. <laughs> and number one comes back with a jump kick, and I'm like, Poof. But I don't judo karate too, so I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> but before I can do any more damage, suddenly we all hear a ch, ch And the one good for nothing left standing, he's holding a handgun. And he aims it straight up like he's holding Jesus hostage. He's threatening maybe to blow a hole in the moon. And Janet and man's huddled in the corner, praying to the same Anthony, because that's the only one he can remember. And there's me. And my eyes are glowing white, and my bulletproof chest is heaving, 
and my cape is blowing in the wind, and my heart's beating Morse code for follow me just once. Come on, try. And the, good, the one good for nothing left standing, he laughs. He lowers his gun, points it at me, and gives the moon a break. Aims it right between my pointy ears. The janitor man's still calling St. Anthony, but he ain't picking up. <laughs> for a second, it seems like maybe I'm gonna lose. Nah. Shoot, shoot, fuck up, ta! Ah! Oh, wrist crack, neck slash, skin meets acid, ah! Ha ha ha! He's on the floor, and I'm standing over him. And the gun's in my hands now. And I hate guns. Because I'm Batman. And Asterix. Batman don't like guns because Batman's parents got ice by guns a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> but just for the moment, my eyes glow white. And I hold this thing. For maybe I could speak to the good for nothing in a language he understands. And suddenly, all the good for nothings become good for disappearing into whatever toxic slave shithole they crawled out of. And it's just me and Janet and me. And I pick him up. And he begs me not to hurt him. And I wipe sweat and cheap perfume from his forehead. And I hold him tight by his Janet and man shirt collar. And I pull him close so he listens when I tell him. Go home. And he does, checking behind his shoulder every ten feet. And I swoosh from building to building on his way there, because I know where he lives. And I see him, I watch him, his hand trembling as he grabs his keychain and opens the door to his building. But before he even walks in the front door, I'm back in bed. And I hear him turn the faucet on and pour a warm glass of tap water. And I hear him put the glass in the sink. And I hear his footsteps. And they're getting slower as he gets closer to my room. And he creeps open the door, like mad slow. And he takes a step in, which he never does. And I see him standing, staring into nothing. And his face is the color of sidewalks in summer. And he doesn't say nothing. I act like I'm just waking up when I say, what's up, Pop? And he says nothing to me. But I see in the darkness, I see his, tree, his cheeks dripping and not the sweat. And he stands there a long time breathing, like he remembers my eyes glowing white. Like he remembers he's my Pop. And he turns and he puts his hand on the doorknob. Before he leaves, he mumbles two things to me. I'm sorry. And I lean over and I open my window up just a crack. And if you look up high enough, you can see me. And from where I am, I can hear everything.